In our last video, I shared how Yahweh has translated me into the future. We discussed the power of the mature sons to overcome oppressive artificial intelligence, robotic beings, and antichrist militias. Today, we'll look at the peculiar nature of tomorrow's cities. In the time travels I previously shared, I mentioned my surprise at the lack of life present in residential neighborhoods and cities. Unsure about this, it wasn't until I was translated into the future three more times that the pattern became clear. In each of these three travels, I witnessed similar architecture, modern black buildings. In the first, I suddenly found myself in a private airplane moving above a great metropolis, something like a New York City, Tokyo, or London. What startled me was the blackness of the buildings. They were monoliths of structures, a dense number of great skyscrapers. They were matte black in appearance, lacking any reflective properties as if they were absorbing the sun rather than reflecting it. It reminded me of stealth bombers. Somehow, this did not apply to individual buildings, but the entire city. Every building appeared new, not one out of place. I figured it must be a new development in the distant future. But even then, to accomplish this sheer number of buildings simultaneously is absolutely impossible by today's standards. The technological capability to achieve something like this is uncanny. In Watchmen Warnings number 2, I shared a prophetic dream I had where I observed the futuristic city showcasing a stunning display of technology, and how this came about with a sudden and rapid leap in technological development. This would explain the arising of the Black City. In the second translation, I stood outside my parents' home and saw a massive black portal suspended in the sky. This was Hoshek, which is a dark cloud of the secrets of Yahweh. Hoshek is found in Job 12.22, which reads, He reveals mysteries from the darkness and brings the deep darkness into light. This portal was the underside of a city in the future, where I now found myself. Once again, the buildings were matte black. Waters surrounded the city with Tesla-like family-sized boats parked in one section. Again, I noticed a lack of life and asked the Lord where the people were. I received no reply. Holy Spirit brought me into a building and began directing me turn by turn in my knower through many doors. Finally, I met an individual inside, and they mentioned we were present after the war. Hearing this in the encounter, I thought, the rapid technological advancement to rebuild like this, this fast, comes after the war. While this may speak to warfare through open arms, it may also speak to war fought through other means, more subtle means. For instance, these past two years we've been in a global information war which, in some respects, has eclipsed the first two world wars. Many don't realize this as a result of indoctrination, manipulation, and censorship by global governments, big tech, mainstream media, and social justice warriors. On the fall of Babylon, the world system, Revelation 18 verse 23 reads, For your merchants were the great men of the earth, for by your pharmakeia all the nations were deceived. In the third translation, I began in an interim realm, using a window as a portal, phasing through many walls until I shifted into flight over a city. We learn more about portals and how to do this in this training. This city, populated with all black buildings, was clean and ultra-modern like the others. However, it differed from the other cities in that the buildings were low-rise, glossy, and reflective. As I descended to street level, Unlike the other travels, there were many people walking about as the city was lively and populated. I approached two teenage girls, one of which was wearing a mask, and the only one I noticed to be doing so. I asked them what year this was, which they brushed off. I brought up COVID, thinking it would have gone away by this point. They were confused, mentioning they'd just gotten through another round. The people were using something called crystals to heal, but this was not the crystalline solids we know of. Rather, it seemed to be a name for a drug. They walked away. My attention turned towards a very large man, about 6'5 and at least 300 pounds. He appeared as a biker, bald, and with a long beard. A thin jacket draped over his shirt, which displayed the word gator in large letters alongside an alligator image. It seemed to me as if he was dealing these drugs. To my knowledge, this was a mission-based translation to gather intel, something we learn about in our training on how spirit travel destroys darkness. I asked Holy Spirit if it was permissible to talk plainly with him and gather information. I received the green light. I told the man I was from 2021 and asked him what day it was. He said, it's the 25th of November. I said, what year? To which he replied, 30 years ahead. This is November 25th, 2051. The translation ended, and rather than try to dip back in to re-enter, Holy Spirit prompted me to wake up and record the date as it was important. 
I hesitated to include this encounter because, really, I'm struggling to understand it. It's possible these elements were symbolic despite the seemingly literal nature of the translation. Do I think we should take this as literal and expect COVID to continue on for decades, for Jesus not to come back for decades, or trust the words of a potential drug dealer sporting somewhat demonic clothing? No, but I want to put it out there. A lot of you reached out to me after the first time travel video sharing that you saw the same things I saw, but for varying reasons kept them to yourselves, and found liberty in hearing it's not just you, and it's not just in your head. Yahweh is doing something. He's pushing us further. He's expanding his sons across space-time, and just talking about these things, whether we have the understanding of what's going on or not, can develop that understanding and bring activation and further encounters of like kind. As to the black structures, it wasn't until this third experience that I really began considering their function. Clearly this wasn't symbolic, but had a use in the future. It was at this point that I discovered graphene, which is black and is labeled as the material of the future. It's described as a material with great technological capabilities, positioned for next generation architecture and construction, being one of the century's greatest discoveries in physics. Its hardness paired with extreme elasticity is accompanied by incredible thermal and electrical conduction capacity, making it a super material that is 200 times harder than steel, yet 1,000 times lighter than paper. It's 98% transparent, conducting electricity better than any known material, and can convert light at any wavelength into a current. For these reasons, the construction sector views graphene as a revolutionary material that will eventually displace the use of traditional materials such as concrete and steel, particularly as it's made from carbon, the fourth most abundant element in the universe. Have you seen black buildings? Black cities? Were there people and how many? Has the Lord shared insights with you into another world war, crystals, or graphene? Share in the comments. I'd love to know. In the next video, we'll look deeper into the future self.